also using for the servos. For the ailerons, I'm using the Hextronic 900, that's a 9 gram servo. And the reason why is I like the bigger arm, so I get huge motion in my um, ailerons. You can see the ailerons are quite large, and that's so you can spin the plane real easy. Um, and I need the 9 grams, and I went to a smaller 4 gram servo for the ailerons. I didn't get the motion in the ailerons that I wanted. I also didn't get the speed. The Hextronic is instantaneous, and there's no like lag because it's struggling, you know, it's instantaneous. So I found that it's worth using the 9 grams uh, for the elements. Then it uses an elevator. So that's all it is, is elevator with a 4 gram servo, and then the ailerons with a 9 gram servo. That's your total control. And you'll see it gives you plenty of control in the air. The 9 gram servo you see is over the, the CG of the plane, very close to it. Now I put a carbon fiber tube you know, off the motor mount, and it's like a clothespin. It actually, I, I made it like a clothespin, it slides on, and uh, the reason why is when I was flying this initially, um, as I was perfecting the design, I found that I was, it would crash a bit and it would bend right here at the nose, and that was the weak spot. So what it is, I made this like clothesline type carbon fiber tube. See, on this side, it's just the tube, and then on the other side, I put a notch in it. And the reason why I have that notch right there is for the Nanotech uh, uh, 300 milliamp um, battery. It fits right in there. I'll show you that in a second. Now this battery, I'm using a 45 to 90 C. They have two ratings, the smaller rating, C rating. You want to go with the higher one, the 45 to 90 C, because this will suck down this battery down to 25-30%. Um, in like three, maybe four minutes. So you don't get a huge amount of flight time, but I want is a super light battery that it would fly this just tiny little plane. And um, and plus the battery being the high C rating, it really flies. Um, this 3200 kilovolt motor is the only expensive component on the whole thing. It's like 14 bucks. Everything else is super cheap. This battery is uh, $5, so you can buy like six or seven of them and uh, fly for a good amount of time without even having to charge up. And that's what I recommend. Don't just get one or two, because one or two will give you like uh, six to eight minutes of fly time. You know what I mean? Big deal. So go with like a whole bunch of them. The uh, Hextronic servos, the nine gram is only like three bucks. Same with the four gram servo, three or four dollars. I'm using a lemon receiver just because I didn't want the case. I wanted to keep it as, as light as possible. You can also use a Hobby King receiver, but um, strip, strip it of the case. You know, that's what I would do. And then I have a Hobby King um, 10 amp ESC, super light. Everything I looked at was for lightness in this model. It's just, you see the body, it's a flat body. Um, I didn't ha make a, a, a make two layers, make it into a body. I wanted to keep it light. So I put my servos in line with each other. Uh, and then I put my battery, ESC, and receiver in line with each other on the other side of the body. And the reason why I want it streamlined, as streamlined as I can. Now I run a carbon fiber um, spar down here, the body. I run one from here all the way to the back. And then I run a carbon fiber spar from the tip of the wing to the tip of the wing along the leading edge. And this makes it practically indestructible. I've crashed this plane multiple times. Because I fly it pretty pretty crazy because it's such a little plane and you don't have to worry about wrecking it. It weighs about what a whammo frisbee would weigh. And um, it's super light and you can fly it close to you. You don't have to worry about it hitting you, big deal. It'll just bounce off you. With the carbon fi fiber spar along the leading edge of the wing, the wing is extremely stiff and high performance. At the same time, that gives it, um, it hits something, it doesn't even affect the wing at all. You can see the most I got was a teeny little wrinkle right there. Um, that's it. Uh, and this is with multiple crashes. The prop, I am using a uh, 5043 prop. It's an EP prop. So EP5043 Hobby King prop. And basically, um, they have uh, these little um, prop. Uh, you know, bands, so I would order the smaller ones and they fit on there perfect. This prop just fits so perfectly and that motor just snaps in place and it's real nice. So, let's take a look at the fly. First thing I do want to show you is 
how nice the battery goes in. So you'll see here, I uh, plug the battery in and I just use some duct tape to hold it, hold the battery into the compartment so it doesn't fall out. So what I do is I pop the battery into the space that I created in the carbon fiber tube and then I wrap that battery as such. Now, that's the plane. You can see ailerons and elevator. That's the whole way that this plane flies with ailerons and elevator on it. You can see it has good vertical performance. And right now, I'd say the wind is about 10 miles per hour, 8 to 10. And it doesn't affect the plane hardly at all. Now, I am flying at full throttle because of the wind. Now, here I'll show you how it spins. So, you can see why I put a lot of aileron on the plane. And the reason why is this is a small plane, so if you have wind and you need to correct, you don't want it to be slow, you want it to be instantaneous. You can hear the plane going by. It's very quiet, and I say the key advantage there of it being small and quiet is it's not going to disturb anybody. Um, you could be at a park like this, and uh, if I was in the summertime at this park, I don't think anybody would be upset. Whereas I've flown other planes, like my wings, which they're small too, but they make a lot of noise because the prop spins so fast. It's a, you know, and it makes noise, the prop does. And it does bother people. And I've had some people come to me. A lot of, most people come to me and say how cool it is, but you'll have some people get upset. But I don't imagine you'd have anybody coming to you about this plane. You can see it flies upside down nicely, right side up. It doesn't care which way it's flying. And that's what I like about it. It's so small, but it's got speed to it. So um, the nice thing about it is it's not like an indoor flyer that you can't take outside. And you can't obviously take this out in 20 mile per hour winds, but anything 10 or under. Initially, you want to fly it in 5 or under. But uh, as you get experience with the plane and you, your response time is quick, you can fly in a 10 mile per hour winds, and when the wind buffets it a little bit, you can easily, you can see here, how quickly you can spin this thing. You can easily counteract the wind. Um, I'll fly it by slow here, and give you an idea how good it flies slow. And now, you know, I'm facing the wind. <laughs> you can see, you can almost stop it. Here I'll bring it in and you can see how nice it lands. Now I don't have any landing gear on this at all. So you can just basically bring it in. You don't have to worry about you know bringing in a dainty or whatever because it's so light. It's really not going to damage anything. The only thing you're going to want to do too is get a whole bunch of props because there is no landing gear. So sometimes when you bring it in, if the prop would be like this, you know you're going to chip it, whatever. The props are delicate. Um, so they're real cheap though. You can get like a five or six pack for like two or three dollars, I think it is. So I just buy a bunch of those packs, like three or four of them, and then you're good with the props. The O rings, they have a small wing that they sell, and um, those, those O rings are for that wing. It's like a smaller size ring that Hobby King sells. And you want to get those, you don't want to get the full size ones because the motor's so tiny, you need that little a little band for it. Um, other than that, I think you guys got an idea how the plane works. It's all on foam board. I use Hobby King foam board. One foam board, so one dollar in foam board. A couple of dollars in carbon fiber. Spars, your tube. You'll never have to actually you know, buy another tube or more carbon fiber spars because you don't have to glue these spars in. You just lay them in the front and you tape over them 
and if you do destroy the plane after so many times, you just use those spars on the next plane. So your actual cost of building a plane is after the electronics and your initial purchase of the carbon fiber is a couple of dollars per plane. So if you do wreck it, it's not a big deal. You'll see I run the, um, the uh, control rod for the rudder. I had, what I did is I used uh, extra servo arms that I had sitting around and I just jammed them into the plane gluing them with hot glue. And that's all I did is to make the rudder work. And that way it won't bend at all. It gives you a much more solid response for the rudder. You can see I have a pretty decent size um, control surface for the rudder and I, I like to have responsiveness in my planes. So if you build it the way I have it, it's going to be extremely responsive. If you find it's too responsive, just um, tone down your servo motion a bit with your x and differential. And it, once you get really good, you might be like me and really want to be able to flip this thing and they'll just do what I do. I have really no serve, no, no expo or anything on this thing, so I fly it hard. Thank you very much for listening. Have a great